Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and today is Tuesday, October 11th, 2016. It's about uh, a little after 12, about quarter after 12 Eastern Time as I'm starting this video. And I wanted to point out a few things on the broad markets. Uh, last night I spent, uh, well actually most of the day and into the night, looking at dozens if not hundreds of charts in my watch list. I was looking at um, broad market, broad stock indices, uh, individual sectors, uh, commodities, fixed income, uh, just about all of it. There is a lot I want to get out. I'm not, I can't possibly communicate all in this video. Uh, so what I'll do is focus on where the, um, the, the key things that I'm watching right now and, uh, where we might make some money off this. All right. This is the S and P 500 or the, the spy, the S and P 500 tracking ETF, 60 minute chart, same chart I've been covering for a long time. Uh, same story. I've talked about it quite a bit. We've had this multi-month trading range, and there's some levels within that trading range. You know, when we get above and below, that's all these different lines here. And most importantly, or I should say most recently, I've, fo I've been focusing on this, uh, these two yellow lines, which form a, a symmetrical triangle pattern. So it looks like right now uh, we're starting to crack below that level on the Qs, or I'm sorry, on the SPY. Uh, so there's a level to watch, and then we also have those recent lows uh, in the uh, SPY to watch, and that's also an important level right around the 212.36, call it 212 area if you want to be safe. So that would be, if this breakout sticks and we see some downside follow through, that would be a level to watch. And um, <clears throat> a move, a solid move down below 212 would open the door for, uh, you know, I've had that minimum target here for months. We've came close to it, but I still think that's a minimum downside target. Now, I should say, again, minimum. Based on everything that uh, I've covered in the past few months, this is this extremely tight sideways trading range, the extreme pinch in the Bollinger Bands, extreme low short interest, everything else. I expect a much larger move, especially it, once we get a definitive break out of this sideways trading range now, you know, that was my minimum target back here. And I, I could have seen, a, uh, you know, back at that time, maybe uh market came down and maybe moved back up. But no, instead we built up this energy, if you will. That's like a coiled spring, especially now that it's compressing down in that triangle pattern. So, um, you know, and I, I, I've said this recently quite a few times in the trading room. I believe I've mentioned this in videos or static posts. You know, be be ready. There's only uh, in the market. There's a few times a year, typically only a couple, two, three times where you have some very sharp, powerful moves either to the downside or the upside where at least me and I can just tell you from my experience swing trading for years. That's where the bulk of my gains are made in those moves. You know, the rest of the year, you have this, you have this tough trading, not always so tight, but where the market is in a uh, non-directional trend, just chopping around. Swing trades are very difficult, both long or short, because stops get run, targets fall, you know, you don't reach your targets because the market's not going anywhere. So, uh, again, you know, not to sound like the boy who cried wolf, um, because I know I've warned of some big drops, and we've had some along the way, but for a while now, uh, the energy is there. That's all I'm trying to say, and we're sitting right on these key uptrend lines. Uh, so, uh, you know, as I said, these are the, point, the, the points in time where we make a lot of money, both long and short. And, uh, you know, we did a pretty good job of getting, you know, short on a lot of these and also gaming the bounces. Uh, there were periods where we've been chopped around, but for the most part, um, that's where, you know, I can tell you personally, um, the bulk of my gains in 2016 came early in the year, both on the short and long side. And, um, you know, since then, it's been a, just a tough market, uh, very non-directional, choppy, back and forth. You know, these, these are ranges, and we did game some of this, some of this that we got. Uh, I remember being short into there, covering post covering on the lows or in that post-Brexit stuff, but missing a lot of that run or underestimating that run, I should say. And then this, of course, as we know, everybody's been ground grind to pieces in the sideways trading range because the market's gone nowhere. So um, this is my point that, uh, you know, looking at this, by the way, just while we're here on the SPY, you look at the, the, the trend line here and the trend line here, this looks like a very large rising wedge pattern. You have, you know, it starts off the uh, February lows. And uh, at most points in time, if I just looked at this chart, I might say, 
this wedge is, is an immature wedge, meaning it needs another thrust up within the wedge before it goes on to break down. And that very well may be the case. However, with everything else taking, taking everything else into account right now, uh, I'm very much open to the possibility, in fact, leaning towards and expecting a breakdown uh, at this point where I think a lot of eyes think the markets will have another thrust up. And, um, you know, the markets uh, tend to be cruel and they, they like to disappoint the, the masses. So you have this triangle pattern. Again, it was shown on that 60 minute chart. Uh, you know, I'm sure bullish traders are waiting to position long for breakout. And, and you certainly need to respect a long side breakout above that triangle. And then above this level here, we have another horizontal level there. Uh, and that is a, certainly a possibility. However, right now we're sitting on a cliff, the edge of a cliff. You have this uptrend line on the SPY, the S&P 500. Um, you have those recent sideways trading ranges, which I said are like a coiled spring. Uh, you have uh, just about every major index. Here's a QQQ. You can see us starting to crack below this uptrend line right here on the Qs. After, you know, very powerful and extended divergent highs. Uh, you go across the board, you can look at the mid caps, mid caps are cracking, there's the uptrend line off the January lows and the mid caps, we've clearly broken down, we've broken down, back tested, limped along, remember the mid and small caps, they're going to wait for the, the large caps to cue them on, on where the market's heading, you know, so that's why these breakdowns haven't really been followed up with impulsive selling yet, because the queue and the spy are sitting on support. Uh, I can all but assure you if the QQQ and SPY uh, make a solid impulsive breakdown below those trend lines that I showed you, and especially below the recent trading ranges, I told you on SPY, I think I mentioned that. Uh, let's get back to the 60 minute charts. You know, we need to take out those recent lows, so called around 212, QQQ. Uh, 116 is still my big level. Uh, get this shaded box out of the way. That 116 level, yes, we broke it once. Market came back up, but uh, uh, the Q's lost 118 so far. That was a level I've been watching before. We used to, we've had a lot of reactions uh, from below, uh, underneath where that was resistance, resistance, resistance all the way back here. We broke above it. Sure, we've sliced through it recently, but uh, uh, just more recently, very recently, I should say, we had it level has still acted as support and it has a history of acting as support and resistance you can see these gaps all these reactions there a lot of them so uh, right now this is near-term bearish and as I mentioned I keep using the word powder keg the potential is there um, you know if you're a swing trader and you're you're gun shy because you've been trying to go long or short in this um, and you give up now, well, it's just a repetitive cycle. And, 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 you know, to be successful in trading, you just have to, you know, sometimes get up back on your horse and be ready to go. So recognize that the charts are, are set up for a powerful move right now. And, um, you know, if you wait two or three days for the confirmation, uh, the thing about the markets is they often wipe out, they often wipe out uh, weeks or even months of gains in just days and uh, that that's not uncommon so I could see you know the cues uh, you know if this breakdown sticks and we start to build on it we could move down sharply wiping out the entire you know two to three months of trading in just a matter of you know f several trading sessions maybe a week maybe a few days um, and uh, you know, you don't want to wait till that happens. If you do, then the markets have come up on support. It's not objective to add anymore. There's, you know, the odds for a counter trend bounce, which will probably, you know, shake out your stops. I mean, this is just my trading style. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, I'd say the majority of the stuff I see out there on the web, people are trend followers. They tell you the trend is your friend. Don't fight the trend, blah, blah, blah. I, I catch tops and bottoms. That's what I do. That's why I trade these wedges. Sometimes they break down. You get a little back test like that and then move down. And other times they break down and you have a waterfall sell-off. Um, and at this point in time, I can tell you the the charts indicate uh, we could get a pretty pretty quick move down. Uh, all right. So that's really just an overview of the markets. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, semis I like very much. Uh, you know, we had a recent flurry of uh, semiconductor related trades that uh, were stopped out 
Um, we shorted it up here on SMH. And that wedge, right here, we had a divergent top. And that wedge certainly did play out for a correction. It came very close to the first target, had another thrust up, and formed an even steeper, larger rising wedge. Uh, so we're, it looks like we're starting to crack below that wedge today just slightly. We really need to see a, a little more follow through. Now the, the trade's an official trade now. We took out 68.38, which was also horizontal support. Very beautiful chart in my opinion. These, these negative divergences uh, in place right now, double negative divergence. And you look at an, any other semiconductor sector or ETF. Here's the SOX, the Philly uh, Semiconductor Index. And uh, that and this is a clean chart, too. This is very clean to me. Uh, bearish rising wedge, multiple reactions. This is about, you know, on a scale of 1 to 5, that's got to be up there with a 5 for a bearish rising wedge. It's close to the apex. Confirm with divergence. You have that, you know, MACD is curling down right now, making a bearish crossover. Val or confirming this, this second peak in the uh in the macd you know the one thing i mentioned before i didn't I'm not crazy when the macd is flatlining like it was there but here you have a distinct peak right there and another distinct peak now with that confirmation so any additional downside especially a crack down below this trend line will have confirmed that negative divergence you already have the negative divergence on the rsi and i don't see really you know i do have some earlier targets and some other uh, support levels in between, but I, I would say with a high degree of confidence that the semis are going down to this level, and that's you know better than a seven percent drop, you know seven almost eight percent drop from where they are right now, and um, you know, possibly more from there. Let's look at the weekly chart. Uh, you know if they fail that new high, um, let's just take it as it comes. I'll leave the price targets where they are now. I just want to mention that you know this could prove to be a false breakout and uh, it's also a very large divergent high you can see the divergence in the RSI uh, don't know if we have divergence on the PPO doesn't seem like it there now we don't but we do have divergence on the RSI uh, as you can see with prices wedging up making a higher high and uh, again there's that wedge drawn on the uh, daily chart so crack of that wedge brings us back to that uh, you know I'd say at least that 10180 level on the socks and if that goes, um, there are certainly some support levels all along the way. I could add them all here. But, um, you know, there's a potential for a move down here, and that would be a much deeper correction. That would take us down about 32% in the semiconductor sector. So we'll see. One, first things first, let's see how this plays out. Let's see if the broad markets uh, that I just went over crack those, especially those daily uh, uptrend lines and and most importantly in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. And uh, if they do, then that will, uh, or I can tell you flat out with very little doubt that the success or failure of the SMH uh, SOXL trade uh, will depend, hinge largely on whether or not the QQQ reverses. The Qs are very tech heavy. Um, technology and these are the you know leaders of the tech industry of the semiconductor stocks and that's what the queues are chock full of and so uh, you know to see a correction uh, like this in the semiconductors without the queues moving down is very unlikely um, very very improbable so uh, again the charts are lined up I, I see both heading down lower but there's still a little work to be done on the queues. However, I wanted to position in the semiconductors uh, ahead of time because I think if you wait for that confirmation, this is my opinion, if you wait for that firm breakdown in the QQQs, the semis are going to be down here already so in what I call no man's land. No man's land is what I refer to when a stock is between support and, and uh, resistance. In other words, if we break down here, we break that support. Broken support then becomes resistance. I'm referring to this uptrend line as well as that uh, 47, 4487 level. So when you come down here, and there's certainly there's a, some minor support there, what happens is now you have an elevated chance for a bounce. You don't want to short here. I don't like to short here. I don't like to short no man's land. You know, I can short here. It's objective. I can quantify my stops easier. When you short in between, you know, the the breakdown point and the first target. Uh, the odds for a counter trend bounce, which can put you immediately in the red on that trade, uh, are quite elevated. 
Uh, so I like to short the breakdowns, and then uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll follow the charts, and, um, you know, I had a few different targets. This is SOXL, which, I, again, that's the uh, leveraged one. There's a, another support level there. All right, I'll keep this trade updated on, on the site. I'm sort of rambling now, but I do see just tremendous potential here. And, uh, you know, we shorted them back here. You can see you can go on the site, check all these trades. are always archived. You know, last time we... Uh, took this one down for a 33% profit and uh, hopefully we're going to do that again it looks to be about mm, yeah right around 30 or so I think we can do that again somewhere close to that all right I'll leave it here and I will update this and as I mentioned in the post for the semis today um, there's a ton of individual semis that I that I think look great and like any sector when you short the ETF or go long the ETF you're, you're buying or selling the good with the bad. Um, in other words, the most bullish setups with the most bearish setups. Now, there's safety or relative safety in shorting an ETF or buying it going long an ETF because you don't have uh, a very large gap potential. You know, if one company meets or beats uh, or misses earnings, uh, you're not going to have a huge gap against your position because it's the ETF is diversified among many names, so any big gaps between one or the other, a couple stocks in there are somewhat muted or balanced out by the rest. Um, however, with that being said, that cuts both ways at relative safety because, uh, you know, I can go through this sector, which I've done. I have a, a watch list right now with a bunch of individual semis that I think will outperform to the downside, the most bearish setups uh, of what SMH will do. So. And as far as SOXL, that's just if you're using leverage, uh, it's six to one half dozen to the other. You can short the individual names in a margin account. If you're shorting, you have a margin account anyways. And you could just short three times as much, although that's not really advisable on a, on a very aggressive sector. So, All right, I'm getting off topic. Let me wrap this up here, and um, I'll follow up uh, as, if I see any developments. And again, I may add some of the individual semis. So, you know, if you are thinking about taking a position in SOXL, SOXS, which is the three-time bearish, SMH, or any of the other semi-ETFs, um, and you plan to do short individual names, just, just make sure to leave the allotment in your portfolio. You don't want to put too much in any one sector, and they're all going to move together in, in very tight um, synchronicity, you know, up and down these semis. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed.